Good evening and welcome to the bubble here in Wembley. It is the media workouts of Fight Week. On Saturday night, we will have a new world champion being crowned. Lawrence Okoli takes on Shustov Gravatsky, who you can see, perfect timing, has just made his way into the ring. Uh, Christoph's been next door. He's actually done his full training session, uh, so he's just going to come in and have a light shakeout. Such a big night for both Gravatsky and Okoli. These two were due to meet, obviously, back in December on the... Anthony Joshua Pulev card. Uh, Christoph unfortunately contracted COVID-19. I spoke to him earlier uh, and just asked, you know, how are you feeling now? It, he did have uh, symptoms and effect from that. It was something that meant that he was out of action for a number of weeks. Um, he is fully recovered now and comes here full of confidence and a big team. For those of you that are joining us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, send in your questions. We'll do our best to get through as many as we can. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick look now. Uh, if you've got any shout outs as well, um, I'll do my best to uh, answer them. Tonight we're also going to see Chris Billum Smith go through a media workout. He's in a 10 rounder against Vasil Dukar from the Czech Republic. Anthony Fowler will follow. He's taken on Jorge Fortea from Spain. Uh, that's a very, very interesting fight. It's got a WBA ranking. Fowler obviously um, looking to force a fight with uh, Sergio Garcia. Jorge Forte has come in full of confidence and he too is looking to um, build on the momentum he's had in his career. Went the distance with Bakram Murtazaliev, uh, who's the IBF number one, so comes with good credentials. And then, of course, we'll have the main event fighters. Lawrence Okoli will be on last. But let's just make our way back to the ring here where you can see the pole, the veteran pole. I say that quietly, he's 34 and full of experience, but I think we can safely say he's a veteran. The former world champion from Poland, 33 fights, 31 of them he's been victorious. And the two defeats, yeah, Usyk, one of the best cruiserweights of the modern era. That was a, a deserved win. But Maris Breedis, we all know that that comes with um, a serious backstory. Some would argue that uh, Breedis was lucky not to be disqualified. Gravotsky, when quizzed on it earlier, just said, I don't want to talk about it, it happened. Okay, let's see what he's going to do here. Is that it or are they gone? It, yeah, if he's there, yeah. Sorry, there's a little bit, obviously, a language barrier here. Just hoping that... Christoph, sorry, I know you were on your way out. Mike was going to help us translate here. Um, one of your last training sessions. Uh, there'll be a lot of people tuning in from Poland watching this. Just how confident are you you'll be taking that world title back to Poland this weekend? Także to jest jedna z twoich ostatnich sesji treningowych. Dużo ludzi z Polski nawet to będzie oglądać. Także jakie są twoje jedno z ostatnich słów? Oglądajcie, kibicujcie, trzymajcie kciuki, a na pewno będzie piękna walka. Watch it, support it, you know, cross your fingers and surely it's going to be a beautiful fight. How are you feeling now you're here? This bubble life it is very, very different. Jak się czuję, że jesteś tutaj? To życie w tym bomblu jest zupełnie inne. Tak, inne, ale bardzo się cieszę. Dziękuję Ediemu Karnowi, że jestem tutaj dla całego meczu, dla mojego promotora, tak samo dla moich trenerów. Jesteśmy bardzo dobrze przygotowani i się bardzo cieszę, że tu jesteś. Yes, it's different, but I'm very happy. I'm very grateful that I can be here and I'm grateful to my, to my coaches, to my sparring partners, to everybody that I can be here. You're a veteran, you're experienced, you probably, there's no style that you haven't seen before. Lawrence Okoli's going to train just before 9 o'clock. Are you going to come back and watch him or are you done now? You've done all the studying that you need to do. Także ty jesteś weteranem, ty już pewnie widziałeś każdy styl walki, nie jest ci to obce. Także tutaj będzie Okoli przed dziewiątą jeszcze trenował. Czy przyjdziesz go, go obejrzeć, żeby zobaczyć, czy... Nie, nie ma problemu. Nie, nie będę przychodził, oglądał. No to i tak to jest taki pit na wyda, ale dla kibiców także. No, I will not come here to watch him because I know it's just it's just for you know for fans and. Just finally, what's your prediction before you go? Um, we'll get a chance to speak to you hopefully at the press conference, but for everybody that's watching that might not catch that, what's your prediction for Saturday night? Także my może jeszcze będziemy rozmawiać na konferencji przed, ale jakie jest twoje twoje przewidywanie na noc, na sobotnią noc? Oczywiście moja wygrana. It's obviously going to be my win. Thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Dziękuję bardzo, że że do nas
Okay, so as predicted, that was very short and sweet. We got a little bit of skipping. We got uh, some bandages being taken off. We got a little bit of juggling. And we got him leaving the room. Uh, so for those of you that tuned in to see an in-depth Christoph Gravotsky uh, open workout, hopefully you're not too disappointed, but he's strictly business. The, the setup we've got here, I, I want to try and explain and apologies, this is a disclaimer. We're in a, a concrete room here at the back of the hotel and we're using a, a mobile signal. So if, if there is signal problems, that's our disclaimer. I'm sorry, this is the best we can work with. At the far end of this, you've got a, a cardio gym. Next to that, you've got the boxing gym. And here, you've, uh, you've got the boxing ring. This is the same ring that Joshua and Pulev... Uh, oh. No, 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 sorry, someone's shouting at me that the noise you can hear is the treadmill. <laughs> okay, the noise you can hear is the treadmill. Yeah, next door you've got the boxing room. That's where Gravotsky's just done an hour-long workout. We asked if we could come in and do a little bit of filming, see him hitting the bag. It was a very polite but firm no. They very much see themselves as the away team here this week. Um, and yeah, hopefully, Chris Billum smith is making his way down now. I can see the red boots of the gentleman. So uh, this will be our next open workout. Bournemouth's own Chris Billum smith the 30-year-old. 12 fights, 11 wins, 10 of them inside the distance, just the one defeat to British champion Richard, uh, former British champion Richard Riok for one that uh, Chris very much disputes. So let's just catch up with uh, some of your comments. Jonathan Finch says, a Coley decision, broken nose boxing, is that it? Yeah, well, I, I wasn't really sure, I wasn't really sure that that was it, so uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Rockstar, 1996, Lawrence Coley between four and seven. Okay, very, very interesting. David Hemmings, what does he think of the Bridgerweight division and will he move up? That is very, very interesting. That's gone a little bit quiet, not too many people talking about the WBC's uh, Bridgerweight division. It'd be interesting to see how many of these guys have one eye on that. It's a great question, one that I try and put to, to Chris Bill and Smith, perhaps. Uh, Tony Lyons, are Coley going to spark that dude out? Well, the punching power suggests that Lawrence has got a strong chance of that, but... As I said, Gravotsky's durability can't be underestimated. Stopped only once by Breedis in uh, farcical scenes out in, in Riga. Rockstar 96, his win against Hook is still one of the best fights I've ever watched. Yes, after this is finished, do some YouTube browsing. Get on there and, um, and see. Uh, it's a great fight, very, very watchable. Let's just uh, yeah. Let's just get on to Chris Billum Smith. Who's he taking on? Vasil Dukar. We started talking about him before um, before Gravotsky's workout. So Dukar's an interesting character. People look at that nine three record. It's very very deceiving. Um, he was five and zero oh as a pro kickboxer. Three and two uh, for six years as a Muay Thai fighter. Uh, all three wins actually came through punching stoppages. So he's obviously very talented. Uh, with his, with his hands compared to his feet, but he's a very, very hard man. He's been the distance with Kevin Lorena. Yes, he lost by a wide decision um, out in South Africa, but also been the distance with Alexei Egorov. He's a very good fighter, highly rated Russian. So he's got pedigree. Shane McGuigan, uh, Chris Billum Smith's coach, joins us now. Uh, just while we watch Chris do some shadow boxing here, um, tell us a little, about, a little bit about Chris. What's he like to train? Is he? Um, Someone that Absolute pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the gentleman isn't an ironic nickname. He's very, very polite. He studies the game. Um, behind closed doors, that's, that's the same. He's a very good student. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, he's, he loves boxing, lives and breathes it. He, he's, the sort of, he's the sort of lad that will watch every single bo boxing fight on that weekend. If there's 15 on, he'll watch them all and come in and, you know, be, uh, be talking about them the whole time. So he absolutely loves this game. Um, <laughs> And yeah, since he's been working with me, I feel like he's he's been gradually getting better. And like he was didn't have the best of amateur backgrounds and, and, and records, but you know he's uh, he's definitely sort of proven you know, proven what he's really made of. And like he's, uh, he's he's starting to come forward, starting to get, gain a bit of power. Obviously, his record would suggest that he's an absolute Golovkin knockout artist, but he's not really. He's actually, he puts his combinations together and that's what gets him the stoppages. So, uh, yeah, very coachable and, and top lad. Can I just ask you about how you prepare for someone like Vasil Dukar? And the, the reason I ask that is, 
these guys that come from cross codes, you know, kick, pro kickboxing and Muay Thai. Yeah. Um, Chris said that uh, he, he knew Dukar from his sparring camps out with Breeders. He didn't actually do any work with him, but no, he yeah, was yeah. a better fighter on fight night than he would be sparring partner. They didn't get much out of him in sparring. Yeah. Um, they are quite difficult guys to prepare for sometimes because records can be misleading. Yeah. Nine and three record doesn't suggest too much, but actually yeah. comes as a very tough man and a very dangerous and live opponent. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> you know, Carl Froch, for instance, uh, wasn't the best of sparrers. You know, I, I don't think someone like Saki Obika would have been a very good spar. But on fight night with the small gloves on, they're they're very tough lads. They they're very durable and um, they you know they can wear you out with their sort of grit and determination. So yeah, I don't think you can read into much. I mean, yeah, he he stands a bit square. Um, looks like he's got decent decent power. Quite quite thick up top, so he looks like he carries a lot of his weight in his arms and stuff. So that's probably. Probably credit to why he's pretty heavy-handed, but um, those guys, you just can't go in and have, have wars with him. <laughs> he's going out box them. So that's pretty much our plan for uh, Saturday night. Is that one of the things where you're saying to Chris, look, don't go looking for the knockout because this guy could be here for 10 rounds. He's more than likely going to be here for 10 rounds. If you go looking yes. for it, you're going to come unstuck. And if it comes, it comes. Is that the sort of message that's being relayed from you? Or is it, yeah. look, make a statement, punch holes in him, you might stop him? I think he's got the potential of stopping him, definitely. I mean, like, because as, as I said, he punches in combination. Igor, uh, Igorov, who, uh, who went the distance with him, it was very one pace. If you look at that fight, uh, Dukar versus him. Um, because Chris, you know, he punches in combination, he sort of works the body well. I think there's going to be a potential for us to maybe get grind down and get a, a late stoppage. But... He is tough, he's going to be dangerous at all times, and uh, yeah, just be sensible, really. That's, that's going to be the message for Saturday. Uh, those of you uh, that listen to the Toe to Toe podcast, we, we're going to be speaking to you this week, we've already recorded it. I just wonder if you could just touch on something that we spoke about on there, which is um, the frustration of the, the British title situation. It, you've sort of been waiting for the Dion Juma situation to resolve itself, and it, and it hasn't at the moment. Yeah. Um, Presumably from your side, you don't want to stand still. That fight doesn't look like it's happening at the moment. Are you yeah. now like saying to Chris, focus on other things? Yeah. Um, you, you know, you're not being defined by uh, the wait for Dion Juma. Very much so. Um, I'd love him to, to, to get a British title under his sort of belt. And and because um, there is a massive, there's a massive jump in class, even from European level up to world level, the cruiserweights, there's a lot of guys in and around the, the, the world team at cruiserweight, like the Seslax, like the, you know, um, obviously, Mikabu is, is, the, is, the, is the world champion, but there's plenty of guys. Ig Igorov, um, even Kevin Lorena, he's a, he's, a, he's a tricky fight. So there's a lot of guys in and around uh, with the world level that it's just a huge goal from class. Do I think Tommy McCarthy is a hard test? Absolutely not. So potentially, if the, if the British title fight can't get can't get sorted out, we'll go for the Europe go for the European after this. But the most important thing is just getting a win on on Saturday continue to add value to Chris Bill and Smith's name and um, you know put ourselves in, in the right you know being fan friendly fights and put ourselves in, in the right spot are you looking to get away because Fowler's getting gloved up or are you right to stay with us for one more minute go ahead yeah <laughs> Fowler's answering for you there <laughs> go, go, go on lah um, Matt McKimmy sent in a question I think Chris Bill and Smith is getting better each fight what do the guys at Sky think how far he can go I'm going to put that to you how far can Chris Bill and Smith go he can't hear you at the moment so yeah, yeah. You, can be, you can be brutally honest um, you know, <laughs> southern area level would be, you know, just Chris and Smith's. Uh, no, I mean, look, there's Bradis is, you know, Lawrence is going to move up. Bradis moves up. You've got Gulamarian out there. Um, I think he can fight for a world title. I think he has the potential to do that. Um, but there's also, you know, React Fort that's going to be in line as well. So it's just one of the things with Chris is, uh, even for himself, he, you know, he always wanted to just. Should, like get as good as he possibly could be. Now, if that brings us to a world level fight, a world title fight, then that's that's amazing. That's a huge achievement for a guy that, that that went to try and get on GB three or four times and didn't get on. That would be a huge statement. And um, he is getting better. He is actually suited to the pros, even though he wasn't a, a, a puncher as an amateur. The speed of him at, at cruiserweight, who've worked a lot on his technique, work, work, worked a lot on his sort of rotating, and um, he's just got a, he's got a great boxing brain. So. I would like to see him at one stage. You know, if we can navigate him right, then we can fight for a world title. Perfect. Look, one more before you go, because um, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to talk to you later on. Uh, yes, it's a good night for Anthony Fowler, who's on next, but huge night in the career of Lawrence Akoli. Yeah. Um, 
if he was any more relaxed so far in the bubble, he would be asleep on one of the sofas. He's totally taking it in stride at the moment. Yeah. Um, are there any nerves internally in this team when you weigh up the prospect of um, uh, Christoph Kravotsky on Saturday night? De definitely, of course there's nerves. And of course there's, you know, the, like, it's not a it's not a foregone conclusion that we're going to win on Saturday night. This is a really really dangerous fight. But he's done everything at European level. You know, he's done everything at European level. He's he's deservedly in the position to fight for a world title. Now, it's come after it's the 16th fight. It's come after 15 fights. It's up to him to to go out there and and there and go out and perform. But I think he's more than capable of doing so. And there's not really much nerves. It's just another day in the, in the office for him. Right, I'll let you go, Chris. Cheers. Before you shoot off, can I have a quick word with you. You're live on the stream um, on Sky Sports YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, just how much are you looking forward to, to Saturday night? Uh, Vassil Dukar, we've given him the, the the big build up. What can we expect from you and him on Saturday? Yeah, I think it's. Um it's an interesting fight, you know, obviously people think it's a late notice fight, but he, he's tough like we spoke about and uh, he, he's, he's game, he's definitely game, you know, he's giving me a few smiles here and there and a, a few eyes and stuff like that. It was like a handshake that. over breakfast. Yeah, it was a handshake as well, look, we, we met before and, um, you know, uh, you might think I'm a gentleman outside the ring, which, which I try to be. Uh, but in the ring, I'm a, I'm a different animal, and I'll show that on Saturday night. Yeah, that's levelled at you, isn't it? You know, one of the nicest guys in boxing, the gentleman, isn't an ironic nickname. But that red mist, uh, that's not even red mist, that makes you sound reckless. But that sort of fight night mentality, um, you know, don't sort of mistake my, my kindness for a weakness. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Look, it's, it's a different ball game as soon as you step inside those ropes. Once my hands are wrapped on fight night, um, I'm not, not exactly nice to be around. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's all, all showtime then. Can you just talk, I tried to relay the story, I probably didn't do it very well. So what is the relationship with Vasil Dukar? You've done a lot of work with Maris Bredis out in Latvia. So is that where you met Dukar for the first time? Yeah, it was just, just he was out there for one, one week. I was out there for two weeks. Um, and then I think he was there, I can't remember if he was there the first or second week, but yeah, he came in and, and did a few rounds as well. And that's about as far as it went. He, uh, he asked me after one of the days if, if we could we spa. And I said, yeah, but you better ask them because they're paying us the beer. Um, and they obviously said basically that said no you're, you're our sparring partner not each other's so uh we didn't get a chance to spar them but um we'll we'll see how, how it would have fared on saturday night did you get a chance to watch him spar breeders yeah 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 so watched, watched a little bit of it um i can't remember much to be honest there was probably six sparring partners um the whole time while i was there so um obviously we spoke about it uh, earlier in, in some of the interview that we're going to be playing out throughout the rest of the week but it's a question that i asked shane like frustration is you're obviously frustrated that you're not fighting Dion June, but I just wonder if you've been able to sort of compartmentalise and almost forget about that that path that you were on and just focus on the task in hand. You're not going to be defined by the British title. No, no, no it's, it's, it's a fight and the next fight is always the most important in your career um, and Saturday night and that's what I've got to do. I've got a job in my hands and a tough job in my hands. Um, you know, it could, could, could go 12 rounds or we'll see how it goes, but, uh, sorry, 10 rounds, we'll see how it goes, but, you know, it's... That's, that's all my focus. I don't have time to dwell much in, in this sport. You know, there's always another opportunity and, a, and another heartbreak somewhere along the line. So you've got to stay very level-headed and, um, yeah, just get a job done. Your knockout percentage is very, very high. And Shane McGuigan just said, if you looked at your record there, you'd think you're Golovkin. And he said, it actually doesn't hit as hard as his record suggests, which he meant as a nice thing. I just wonder with Dukar, that he's a renowned tough man. Do you go in the ring wanting to be the first man to stop him does that even play on your mind at all that you want to um i don't know get the fight done inside the distance uh, does that even creep into your th thinking at all yeah i mean you always want to get it done as early as possible you know as the age i was saying you don't get paid overtime in boxing so um but you don't go in there looking for it you go in there to box and, and the, the the way you put your shots together the way you set up your shots um, and the way you deliver them is what causes the, the stoppages or, or causes you to win rounds and that's the most important thing is just winning and so however it comes whether it's knockout or um or points you know you, you've got to take it you know i've been fortunate to have 10 stoppages out of my 11 wins so um i'd love to add to that but if it's not to be it's not to be two words on lawrence okoli first one did he ask you to be in his rap video no he didn't he didn't um i wasn't in dubai so i'm sure he would have asked asked me to be in it otherwise no you don't want to sort of show him up as well in his own video i understand yeah obviously i didn't get the call either but must have, perhaps he hasn't got my number uh and second thing just for lawrence to um fight for world title on saturday night he, he didn't get his chance in december but he gets it on saturday it's a huge night for him um 
just how confident are you that he'll get the job done against Gravatsky? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it, the longer time goes on, um, you know, as well as Gravatsky is like well rested, etc. He's, you know, he's getting older. Um, he's been in a lot of fights, but he's still, he's not, he's not over the hill. That's what I think people will say if. What I think is going to happen is Lawrence will finish in the first half of the fight. They'll probably say he was over the hill. He's not. He's he's in there with a, a special fighter in Lawrence, you know. And Lawrence is a uh, heavy-handed. He's got skill. He's very uh, effective at what he does. He's good at nullifying your strengths um, and exploiting your weaknesses. And I uh, expect that's what he'll do. And I can see it being over within six rounds on Saturday. Well, okay. OK, I'll hold you to that prediction. Go well on Saturday. Thank you for joining us on our stream. Um, you've actually got a full training session to do now, is that right? Uh, yeah, was I that just chat and now you're going to train? Yeah, it might do a little bit. So yeah. OK, look, I'll let, let you get on with it. I don't want to keep you any longer. Let's just uh, have a little bit of natural sound of Anthony Fowler on the pads. So, as an, a bit of an added bonus, uh, Joby Clayton uh, is joined us, who's here in the bubble with Ramla Ali. That's right. Um, big night for her on Saturday. Uh, just what are you hoping for, uh, for her to show in her second professional fight? Um, what did you go away and work on or after her, her, her professional debut? What did you make of that? Um, I thought she boxed really well, and I was very pleased with her. And um, to make that transition from the amateurs into the pros, um, she's a good technical fighter, so we are looking to build on her strengths and uh, minimise her weaknesses, basically. It's a big deal, isn't it, making a professional debut? It's a, it's a huge platform um, under those bright lights. All in all, are you happy with how she, she coped with not just the fight, but the whole week in these bubbles? It's a new experience for all of us. Absolutely. I mean, the, the bubble is an experience in itself, and making your debut... Um, is, a, is, is no mean feat, not just the fight, as you say, but the whole event and the whole build-up to it is a, is a, is a, it, takes a it takes a lot of getting used to. And um, so I'm very pleased with how she coped with that and hopefully we will see a, a polished performance on Saturday um, from that experience. Yeah, I bet your phone's been buzzing this week, hasn't it? Because, I mean... For us uh, at Sky, it's been a big week with the, with the signing of the contracts between AJ and Fury. Uh, you're obviously part of that training team now. Has your phone been ringing off the hook with, with people that are as excited as we are? Well, I don't answer my phone too much. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, could, I could certainly uh, take a bit of, uh, from that school of thinking. Um, it's a big step in the right direction, isn't it? Yeah, it's all positive. It's all positive. It's a positive step in the right direction. And, um, you know, it's going, to be, it's going to be a great event when it takes place. What were your thoughts and feelings after Kubrat Pulev? Um, you've done a lot of work with AJ. Uh, I, I had the privilege of coming up to the IS and just picking your brains for, for an afternoon about um, physical and mental things that you were working on with AJ. How much of that did we see in practice against Pulev? And how did you feel coming away from that... Um, looking back at his performance? Well, I, think, I think we were blessed to have another training camp um, and to go through another training camp and we've been blessed to have the start of this year to train as well because AJ, AJ has been doing some wonderful preparation at the start of this year. He hasn't been out the gym, has he, from looking at his social media? Um, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so it was all positive. It's all, you know... It, I think Pulev was a really good opponent and he, he, he asked a lot of questions in AJ and I think AJ answered them. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the live stream. We will catch up with you and Ramla later in the week. Now you're out of your quarantine and isolation, so uh, I think the bubble's going to get quite busy. But uh, thank you very Pleasure. much for joining us. Joby Clayton.
Okay, so that was Joby Clayton, who is in here with Ramla Ali, uh, but also very importantly part of Team AJ. So Anthony Fowler has just finished his punching session there. Um, he's going to make his way over in a minute, hitting very, very hard. He takes on Jorge Forte, uh, Fortea from Sueca in Spain. Fortea is the um, domestic champion in Spain uh, and has been the distance. So once he's taken his gloves off, he's going to make his way over to us. Um, we know a lot about Fowler and obviously we'll catch up with him in a minute, but just a little bit more on, on Fortea. Um, he went 12 rounds with the current IBF number one background, Murtazaliev. Um, there's an IBF sort of ranking on offer here as well, so you would think the winner will progress. You can see that the main man of the moment, Lawrence Sokoli, has made his way into the gym and he'll be jumping in the ring shortly. This is just such a good uh, domestic division at Super World 2 Obviously, we've got Ted Cheeseman against JJ Metcalf next weekend in Gibraltar. We've got Kieran Conway. Fowler is obviously part of that mix. Just so, so good. Ted uh, Cheeseman uh, and Eggington put on that magnificent fight back in fight camp in the summer. It feels like a lifetime ago. Scott Fitzgerald is on the way back. It might be quite interesting to hear what uh, Fowler has got to say on a potential rematch there. So, yeah, it's just such an intriguing division. And just wonder if Fowler wants to become the best domestically before he chases a European title or if he will go after Sergio Garcia's European title. Obviously, Garcia is very, very well known to us um, after coming over to the O2 and, and doing a real job on Ted Cheeseman. Uh, still got his, his hands around the, uh, the, the blue and gold belt. So you would think that if all goes well on Saturday night, Anthony Fowler could well be in the mix for a European title shot against Sergio Garcia. But those of you that watched the zone at the weekend, you would have seen Amo Williams uh, beat Dennis Duglin in a very, very impressive performance. Yeah, these two are a one-weight division apart, but um, there's no love lost between the pair. And they've had uh, some verbal barbs and traded some insults on social media. And that is a fight that you would think... Um, Eddie Hearn will certainly have some interest in making so once Fowler has made his way over to me here I'll put all of these questions to him stay with us because Lawrence Okoli will be up next Anthony hitting the pads very very hard there usually yeah. uh, these media workouts people like earlier in the night you didn't see it but Christopher uh, Kravotsky skipped yeah. he juggled the balls for about 30 seconds and then he yeah. left you went through a pretty heavy handed routine there um, just peeking at the right time, I suppose. Itchy knuckles. Yeah, I, I, just, I like to do everything 100%. I like to put everything into it. I had a day off yesterday, so I'm, I'm fine today. I'll rest Friday and I'll be flying Saturday, mate. I need a good kip and I'm, I'm back to normal. Are you all recovered now from um, COVID? It was obviously put paid to this fight in February. Um, this has come around at relatively short notice. Have you had enough time to prepare? I've had more than enough time. I've, been, I've literally had a week off since my fight, mate. How many time I've rested when I've been injured or when I had COVID, so I've trained like seven months basically right the way through so I'm at my best mate no excuses come tonight this is the best version of me you're obviously hitting the pads with your trainer Shane McGuigan there um, you've had a little bit of time with Shane now you, you didn't get a chance to really show us what you've been working on against uh, Tete uh, who came to the ring with boots that weren't suitable to box in and, and that was you know over before it started really Adam Harper we got a lot more to judge you against there how do you think that you and Shane are progressing Really good, mate. Like I, I sparred him. We showed 12 rounds. The gym was full. After the spar, everyone was raving about me. All different gyms were saying to me, I can't be all fit, you're right. Your engine's unbelievable. And I was never known for my engine back in the day. I was known for my power, where now I can do the rounds. Now I can, like you see, I'm, I'm explosive, I'm faster, I'm more relaxed, and um, all my hard work is coming together. We haven't had a chance to see uh, much of Jorge Fortea in the, um, in the bubble. He trained earlier behind closed doors. What fights have you studied of his? Are you one of those that actually watches footage or do you leave that all to Shane McGuigan? What do you know about Forte? Um, I watched his fight against Nab Mansouri, which he won. Nab Mansouri is a decent fighter and he boxed a Russian in a world title limiter in Vegas. Don't get there, and she's a top fighter and he lost to the world number one on points. In a, he was competitive early on, then he got beat later rounds. But um, he's a good fighter, mate. I've like, just boxed at English title level against Harper, I'm, I'm not going to lie. He just boxed a world title limiter. There's a big gap. I won my fight easy. He fell short. We'll see where I'm at. Yeah, that's quite interesting, the build-up to that. You said this, this fight will show everybody and me where I'm at. Yeah. Where do you believe that you are in your career at the moment? Um, are you where you thought you would be? Are you where you wanted to be? 
I think I'm getting there now. I think my career to start, I've, well, the last few years I've been stalled a lot because I've been chasing that rematch for Gerald, but I've also learned my craft in the ring. I've realised that amateur boxing and pro boxing are different games where now I'm not looking for the knockout all the time. I'm being a lot more smarter. That's why I can do the rounds better because I can control the rounds. I can dictate my job and I believe I'm better than this Forte. I think Forte is a good, not even fringe world title. He's a bit below that. He's probably European level, which I believe I am myself and I've got to prove it come the night. What about Scott Fitzgerald? Are you sick of people asking you about it? Or deep down, do you want to avenge the only loss on your career? Do you feel that you can really move on before you right a wrong in your eyes? Yeah, I'm over it now. I've got a new team now. I've, I've got a fresh outlook. Shane believes in me a lot, which gives me a lot of confidence. Shane's talking about big names, me fighting. Like, Scott, he's had his problems. Good luck to the lad. But if he doesn't fight me again next fight, after this, hopefully I'll win. I'm moving on. I'm going to chase the belts and the titles and chase me dream now dwell in the past, which I have done for a while now. Eddie Hearn will obviously put some names to you, and I'm sure one of those will be Sergio Garcia for the European title. Um, is that the next level progression for you? Someone we know very well in Garcia, throws a lot of punches, and produced a very, very good performance against Ted Cheeseman. Is that a fight that uh, interests you and, and, and sort of pricks your interest there? Yeah, but I, I, I now want to go into the fight, so I'm, I'm the underdog. My whole career, I've been a favourite, all of my career. I've always been expected to win. Where I want to go with someone now who says everyone goes, oh, Father's going to get smashed here and I want to prove them wrong. I want to box the likes of Garcia and people think, oh, he's going to outbox Father. Father's too one dimensional, but we'll see. I've been working hard behind closed doors and I'm ready to fight now. Yeah, you say you're ready to fight. I go back to that punching session there. Yes, I know that you're going to want to be patient and box, but at the same time, you are someone, certainly through the amateurs and in the early party career, you want to knock people out. Do you want to knock Jorge Forteo out? send a statement on Saturday night? Yeah, I always do. I think I've got it every fight. It's entertainment business. I've got to, like, maybe, wow, that foul is good. Not just, oh, he's all right to me straight by on points. I, I wouldn't knock him out, but the kid's very elusive. He's very hard to catch clean. He's very tough. He might get through the rounds. I'm not going to go out there trying to leave myself open and get caught with the shots just to look at the knockout. I'll line him up with the jab. I'll try and hit him body and head. If I see the opening, I'll go for it, but it's not all about knockout. It's about, it's about winning. Success breeds success. I know how much... Um, <laughs> of a tight-knit, close-knit team you are down at McGuigan's. Just out of shot, Lawrence Socoli's just wrapping his hands here. He, he can't hear you. Um, uh, first off, what do you think of his rap music? You know what, it weren't bad for him, like, I'm not going to lie. He was, was better than what I thought. Yeah, yeah, like, he's, he's a boxer, isn't he? But I watched it, I watched it, you know what, it's not bad, that, but um, I think he's a better boxer than rapper, like. <laughs> Second question, just... Um, how confident are you that he'll be close a play on Saturday night, he'll be world champion? I'm really confident, he's a, he's a special fighter. I've known him for a long time, from the start, before he was a nobody, before he was an amateur boxer. was him on GB and um, I've watched him rise and it's a really inspiring story, even myself. At, at one point I was well ahead of him on the GB set off, he was, he was below me, now he's above me and he, he's rose up really, really fast and I'm really happy for him. Can I feel that clip from Joe Cordina where he said that you were sat with him at breakfast Lawrence Acoli, he'd, he'd been in the gym and it had a load of swagger and was very, very um, sort of, yeah, sure of himself. Sat down at breakfast on his first tournament, he was like, I'm going to knock this guy out, I'm going to knock that guy out. Joe said it with a bit more industrial language than that, but you all laughed at each other and just said, hey, what planet is this guy on? And he went through and did everything that he predicted. His confidence is contagious, like yeah. everything he says he's going to do, he has gone on yeah. to do. It's, it's actually quite amazing, you know, like, because on, on GB, you never really see main knockouts because you're, you're fighting the, the best of the other countries that's offer. So the fights are all evenly matched, but he'd say, Rance, he's there, I've got a feeling Rance here, and you're like, you're thinking, oh, shut up, lad. And so then I'd look at my phone, because you, you wouldn't go and watch because we were fighting the next day, and I'd see Lonzo of Coley wins, TKO round and I'd be like, yeah, he's, done, he's done it, he's done it, do you know what I mean? And um, <laughs> he's, he's some man, isn't he? Some man. Yeah, yeah, he's great to be around. Listen, I'm going to let you go. Thank, Thank you. you very much for uh, coming on the stream. Wish you all the best of Thank luck you. on Saturday night. Go well. Thanks very much, Andy. Nice, nice one. one. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, try and get back to see some of your comments. Um, Leon Brogdon. Lawrence could be elite level against most heavyweights. Never mind Cruiser's KO seventh round. Well, Leon, Lawrence has made it very, very clear and Shane McGuigan on the podcast that goes out on Saturday uh, that their, their future lies at heavyweight, that this is just part of the journey. Um, so very, very, very interesting. Broken Nose Boxing, Gravotsky is a good former world champion, only lost to the two best cruiserweight of the past decade. Yeah, very, very true. And we know that one of those is slightly controversial. Um, 
I mean, I'm, I'm downplaying it. They're slightly controversial, massively controversial in Riga against Maris Bredis. Rockstar 96, some great comments coming in for you. I like Billum Smith. If he can make it through British and European titles, I'd love to see him take on someone from the world team. Alexi Papin, maybe. Yep, definitely. Billum Smith v Dukar will be fun to watch as long as it lasts. Yeah, I agree with you. Is Campbell Hatton still having his debut on the white card? Yes, Campbell Hatton will be making his professional debut uh, over on uh, the white Povetkin undercard next week in Gibraltar. Although some of the comments saying that hasn't been announced yet, so apologies if I've just broken some news. So you can see Anthony Fowler in the ring there. Lee, Lee Cutler joins us on the stream. Lee, uh, you're getting a little bit of stick from the crowd there. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, just tell us a little bit about your backstory. Um, obviously, people won't know, but you're very good friends with Chris Bill and Smith. Um, yeah, just tell us a little bit about your journey into boxing. Well, um, my mum wouldn't um, let me box when I was younger, so I used to go and um, go to school, get on the bus, tell her I was staying at my brother's house, go and stay at his, go boxing. Done that for about a year until I had my first fight coming up. That's how I met Chris, obviously, at Paul ABC. Um, we, we, obviously, me and Chris have become very, very close friends sort of over the years by training there. I had my first fight coming up, told my mum, explained what was happening. She then she's she's now grown and seen it done done more things for how me she, than, how did she take the news? Uh, she was fuming, she was fuming <laughs> at the start, but um, sort of she's grown towards it now. She 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 likes she likes the fact that I box, she's seen it, done things with me in school, I was too tired to uh, cause any trouble when I started boxing. So yeah, it's, it's really good. What about, um, not the journey, but the, the announcement that you're on this card against Brad Ray, um, sort of not come out of nowhere, but it was a late addition for us. We didn't see it until um, relatively last minute. Uh, how much notice have you had? Is it a fight that you knew was going to land on this card all along? Well, um, I was keeping fit towards the end of last year. This year, I just had a funny feeling that something big was going to happen. Um, sort of at, uh, Before COVID hit, there was going to be a showdown in Bournemouth. Obviously, Eddie and that, I don't know if you know, was looking at getting a showdown in Bournemouth, yeah, so I was yeah. getting ready. And I think it was Chris going to headline that one. That was yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was, getting, I was getting ready for that one. Obviously, COVID hit. But yeah, fast forward a year. Um, I was sparring down at um, the matchroom gym. Um, and Tony Sims said to me, oh, good lad, obviously. Um, I'll keep an eye out if they're looking for any opponents around the Super Walter uh, middle, middleweight limit. I'll put your name in the hat. That night, he gave us a message, said, get your manager to keep his phone on. I think they've got a, a match for you. And obviously, then we found out um, we found out that they're going to put us together as a COVID sort of um, a COVID fight. Like a, in case, yeah, like yeah, a standby, standby wasn't it? fight in case, yeah, that's it. In case anyone, anyone pulled out. So we were ready for the 13th of February. It, that was a bit short notice, obviously, because that was like a week and then we were would have been in but obviously it didn't happen then the 20th didn't happen which we, we was looking like we was going to box on the josh kelly bill and then yeah then now now here now we've been given a slot and uh i feel lucky feel very very lucky to be here but i knew it was going to happen i, I knew it was going to happen a bit of a relief for it actually to finally get over the line because i remember being in this bubble it was put to us that there was a reserve fight should there be any problems with the covid test that all went away which obviously was bad news for you yeah just wonder which you know in terms of emotions you must have been up and down up and down am i going to get the chance or yeah like you're sort of Half nod in there, but I get the sense that actually you've been pretty at ease with it. Yeah, I've just been just been chilling, just getting the great sparring in. Obviously, been sparring with Anthony Fowler, uh, been sparring with Ted Cheeseman. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. So uh, yeah, I've been doing, I've been getting the good rounds in. So I was confident from when, when, whenever it was coming. You know, I, I knew I'm ready. I was ready for the step up, and um, I'm ready for the challenge now. I'm ready to sort of test myself against the best, and I can't wait, can't wait to get in in the mix. It strikes me as um, one thing that we've learned from boxing in the in the pandemic and the, and the covid era is stay ready exactly yeah. as you just said you know keep your phone keep your manager to tell, tell yeah. your manager to keep your phone on just wonder how much this could change your whole career on saturday uh, just through staying ready you stay ready you get your chance getting your chance is one thing producing against brad ray on saturday night could be career changes you know um, on our Facebook live stream before the show, uh, it gets a huge audience. You, know, you can yeah. tell your friends and family to, to go there and watch yeah, yeah. it. You know you're going to be on a fixed time. 
uh, just what difference could that make to your career? Oh, it's massive. It's absolutely huge. If I get the, get the win on Saturday, obviously, big things for me and Chris. Obviously, huge things for me and Chris. We could get a show down in Bournemouth like Eddie was going to do before. Is that, is that, how big would that be for the area? Oh, mate, absolutely huge. It's not a big, it's not, it wasn't a big town for boxing when I started, when me and Chris was obviously starting as amateurs. But sort of over the years, with me and him doing well as amateurs, fairly well as amateurs, and then going on to the pro game now, lifting lift the pro game, it's buzzing down there to take a sort of match room and Sky Sports boxing show down there. It would, would be unreal for the town. Yeah, just a word on Chris Bill and Smith. Obviously, we know that you are. Um, we can call you genuine friends, can't we? You're very good mates, so it's not as if you're going to say anything bad here. But um, the gentleman, he really is one of the nicest guys in boxing, but that, it, he does have that switch that flicks when he yeah. gets in the ring. It's, uh, you know, people can. Yeah. Even misread him, I think. Oh, well, definitely. We were in the amateurs. We had a little spar once, and uh, yeah, he doesn't turn very nice. Um, you know, it doesn't turn very nice sometimes. But he's he is a really nice bloke. He's an idol for anyone that's coming up in boxing. Just uh, he's he's helped me through the years so much. Obviously, pushing each other, really pushing each other very hard in the gym. Um, and he's yeah, I just look up to it massively, and I hope obviously me and him can do big things for our small town. What about the football club in the town? Um, it, it, presumably, even if you're not football fans, one of the big things would be for Bournemouth to get back in the Premier League, uh, just because it just brings that little bit more attention to the town. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, well, not the huge. I've been talking to you about football now. That's right. Yeah. Where are we going with this? Yeah. But no, no, no. The Bournemouth the town. Yeah. I mean, it's I huge for the town. In Bournemouth shirt. Uh, it's huge for our, our for our town. Obviously, we, we get the um, Bournemouth players to come in and sometimes do a few uh, sessions with us as well. So last, obviously, before COVID, when they were still in the Premier League, they were coming in and doing sessions. Obviously, my coach train used to train Arta Boric, who's now yeah, over. Cool. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. He trains him. Um, used to train Aaron Ramsdale as well. Obviously, who's gone to. Uh, I don't know. Forget where he's gone. Yeah, forget where he's gone now. But yeah, um, yeah, it's huge for the town. And obviously, if us doing us two doing well, the football club are getting, are getting behind us, which is which is massive. I'm not the biggest football fan, but I get on with people, and people get on with me. So yeah, it's all good. Don't worry, I'm a Gillingham fan, so uh, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, less said about football, the better, lads. Yeah. Uh, Lee, thank you very much for joining us on thank the stream. You. Go well on Saturday night. For those of you that have switched off in your drones, that is the last football talk we're going to have on a boxing stream, don't worry. Okay, so that brings us neatly to the main event. Lawrence Akoli is in the ring. Huge night in his professional career. And he fights for his first world title, the vacant WBO Cruiserweight world title against Christoph Gravotsky. Obviously, Lawrence was supposed to fight for this title on the undercard of Anthony Joshua against Kubrat Pulev. Wasn't to be, Covid struck, uh, but Akoli did stay on that bill, didn't so credit to him, fought uh, 19 and won uh, Nikodem Jezuski. And without taking anything away, it, it was about levels and Akoli was very much a level above Jezuski. Uh, he disposed of him in just two rounds. Lawrence has gone the traditional route, British Commonwealth and uh, European, so it feels like the natural progression. And he's had some standout wins. He's also copped a fair amount of criticism. Um, some fair, some unfair, just for some of the fights that he's been in that haven't been the most TV friendly. You know, Isaac Chamberlain was a huge domestic grudge match, which us at Sky played a huge part in building that up and on the night it, it was just one of those that it didn't deliver. Matty Askin as well was a fight that just didn't live up to billing. It became messy at times. Uh, it was a difficult spectacle to watch at times. But it's one of those that he's learning. He's learning on the job. And you, you could argue that under Shane McGuigan, some of those rough edges really have been smoothed. He's obviously just released his rap video, which I've sort of been teasing all night. Um, a lot of it in jest, obviously. It's doing quite well on YouTube with its viewing figures. Check it out. I'm not his publicist, but check it out. Um, in terms of experience, undefeated in 15 fights, how does that compare to Gravotsky? Gravotsky's 33 fights, 31 of them coming uh, by 
uh, 31 wins, 19 of them I should say, coming inside the distance, just the two defeats that we've already um, mentioned. He's done 193 rounds, Grabowski. Just looking at Akoli there, just the 63. But he's linked up with Shane McGuigan, you can just see putting his gloves on now. And since then, um, the two have had a successful partnership. Started off with uh, Brian O'Shaughnessy, uh, briefly moved under uh, Barry Robinson, the um, American. He seems to have found a natural fit here with Shane McGuigan. Shane, very much someone that's renowned for um, getting his fighters to punch through the target, if you will. But just from uh, my point of view, spending time around the fighters in the bubble so far, he's been very, very relaxed, uh, Lawrence, very relaxed. Uh, if there are any nerves, he's doing a great, great um, job of, of hiding it. It hasn't come to the surface yet. Remember, wherever you're uh, watching this, sending your questions, uh, we'll try and get through of many, uh, of, of many of them as we can. Richard Cameron, Nicoli must use his reach advantage and work behind a stiff jab. It's important that he doesn't let gives him a chance. Concentration is key for Lawrence. Very much agree, and I think everybody will agree with that. Some people referencing the uh, the Akoli sparring stories uh, used by a sparring partner. Uh, many people I know spar Joe Joyce. Uh, obviously, spent a lot of time with AJ up there. Um, very, very. Uh, comprehensive sparring with some of the best in this division. I know, having from spoken to those guys, that he, he very much is a heavy hitter. Lawrence could cause trouble to AJ if they fall. Lol, he's so elusive. Big power too. Yeah, we've already touched on it. Lawrence sees his future at heavyweight. And uh, I know you say that with a lol, but you would think win, lose or draw on Saturday night, he's going to be a huge problem for a, a, a lot of these heavyweights if and when he steps up. As someone already said earlier, he'd be interested to get his take on the bridge weight division as well if he decides to go there. Lots of comments about the pronunciation of uh, Lawrence's opponent. So from the horse's mouth, it is Shishtof Wawatsky. And Inga, I hope that I've uh, have done, have done you justice there, uh, Inga, just um, in the comments, trying to explain to people how to uh, pronounce it. I'm sticking to Gravatsky at the moment. Hopefully that's not offending too many people. King Kong, come on, Akoli. Get that gold, brother. All the best. Lots of well wishes coming in for Lawrence. into it, just a little bit of the, the raw sound on uh, some of this pad work.
Okay, so I'm I'm hoping that the the booming shots on the pads they were coming across uh, on the stream hit him very very hard. I'm sure, particularly with the right hand, and you would think against the southpaw that will be a key shot. Just heard uh, Shane McGuigan say one more there. Like I say, this is just a medial workout. It's a gentle shakeout for a lot of the boxers. So just going through the motions there. But much like Anthony Fowler, actually a full-on pad session. We're so used to people just uh, going through the motions in these sessions. But that is not a touch-up shot. That is a full-on right hand and a full-on jab. Let's go, Akoli, all the way from St. Kitts and Nevis. Iron Kong 26, thank you for tuning in. Inga Mostek, you did it perfectly, you pronounced it properly, I'm impressed. I've had all day to practice, uh, and I still think I am butchering it, so apologies. Seems to be creating a lot of debate as to whether uh, Akoli can eventually step up to heavyweight and be effective. Obviously, serious business at hand against Chris, uh, Krzysztof Gravatsky on Saturday. That is not a given, and I don't want people to think that we are selling it as that. It very, very much is a, a, a tricky night's work and a coming of age fight for Lawrence Akoli. He's, he's either ready for this step up or he isn't, and we'll find out. Crazy D3, Akoli needs to stay at cruiserweight, never move up to heavy unless physically can't make the weight. I think he can make it at the moment, but at 28 I think he's nearing the point that he feels like he, he does need to step up. He, he's been very public in saying that, that's, that's in the public domain, I'm not uh, hopefully spilling secrets that I shouldn't, but I don't think they've made any secret that um, eventually they are going to have to move up. They look great on the scales in December, so... It'd be interesting to see how he looks on Saturday. And I know we're not at Saturday yet, but he's taking his top off for this final round. And if he is struggling, it doesn't look so at the moment. These are heavy artillery shots here. Shane McGuigan says he's thumping. I think that's a bit of an uh, understatement. No, I think people that are tuning into this stream are here for quality <laughs> boxing. I don't think they want to see me on the street, uh, on the pads. Def definitely not. John McCallum, Gravatsky, inactive and coming off a KO loss. How is he fighting for the WBO title? Why not fight active top five like uh, Tyshenko, Egorov, Alexei Papin? Very good point, but um, the WBO certainly didn't agree with what happened out in Riga and um, they ordered a rematch. Obviously because Breedis was in the final of the World Boxing Super Series against Dortikos, that couldn't happen. So to answer the question, that's why um, the stoppage to WBO weren't happy, ordered the rematch. So that brings us to this point here. Yes, he's been inactive since June 2019, but in this pandemic, who hasn't been inactive really? Jason Smith, the power's there. Jason, I can tell you, being only six foot away, the power is real. <laughs> Stephen Bryant, looking forward to the fight. Yeah, I think we're all looking forward to the whole card. Uh, Akoli Gravatsky is the main event, but Chris Bill and Smith against Vassil Dufar, Anthony Fowler against Jorge Fortea, Brad Ray against Lee Cutler, uh, Ellie Scottney's on the bill, Ramla Ali's on the bill. Got some good fights. Coley's main strength is probably distance control. Stains out of punching race for most of the time. When inside, closes the distance in clinch nicely. Can be very tricky to fight against. That was from uh, Gertz.
Yeah, I, 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 feel, I feel very nervous about jumping in with these things. Are you done? Yeah. Do you mind if I have a quick word with you? No. I'll come up. You're live on our uh, Sky Sports stream. Please do not swear. Please do not swear, yeah. yeah. Or do any Michael Jackson impressions like Eddie Hearn famously did in Fight Camp, which I will never, ever live down. Um, first thing first, you seem to be hitting incredibly hard. Uh, just how confident are you that that power could be the difference on Saturday? Um, I think it's going to be a mixture of things. The power is a, a nice addition to it, do you know what I mean? But it's going to be judgment of distance, grit, boxing IQ, sparring with someone as good as Chris Billum Smith, etc. All part of it. So we're we'll in for a good, a good, a good Saturday. At the same time, if you land that right hand or the left hand, but the right hand particularly, which is a key weapon against the southpaw, like we've just seen you land in there, do you believe this fight could be over inside the distance? Oh yeah, most certainly. Obviously, I'm not banking too much on it because there's a lot at stake for both of us. So I know he's going to. Um, fight his hardest. He's been a world champion twice, something that I'm aiming to do now. So um, I expect it to be hard, but I do believe when I do land, he's never going to have been hit like that. Um, so we'll see how he reacts. You don't spend such a long time on a, an elite amateur setup like you did uh, with GB and not come across an array of different styles and southpaws. Um, how do you feel about boxing southpaws? Not everybody in your position, you know, they usually stand there and say, I hate them. No. You don't seem to be too bothered. No, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have uh, James Branch and Cody Davis, shout out to those two, on the GB team with me. Um, those are two southpaws, they were the best in the country at the time. And I've spent, you know, um, months and months with Shane, working with lots of different southpaws. They're two my brothers, wow, when you see them, it's mad. Then you've got, um, Obviously, Thomas McCarthy, or Thomas Carty, sorry, I know we get angry. Thomas Carty, and we had Shukran. So I've had lots and lots of good spots. I'm, I'm ready to go. Southpaw, it doesn't matter. Have you allowed yourself to get too carried away and dream to hear those words uh, and the new champion of the world, Lawrence Okoli? I don't think it's uh, getting carried away. I think it's good. If you read my book coming out April the 11th. Uh, uh, yeah, eight, eight, sorry. Um, See, eight, yeah, um, April 8th. <laughs> April 8th, you world. know. Last, it's like, the yeah, <laughs> it's like dare to change your life. So I'm just trying to, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of pressure on me on this fight, but I'm just trying to take it all in my stride. Also, if anyone's watching, go to Google, type in also called the TKO and give that a little watch. You talk about changing your life uh, in the title of your book, but <laughs> the, the story of where you've come from to here, it's an amazing story already. I just wonder, to top it off by, you know, you're not going to say topping it off with by becoming world champion is going to be the first on the journey. Mm. But from where you've been to, um, I feel like we're doing McDonald's a disservice, but from working at McDonald's to watching Anthony Joshua in the Olympics to now, that already is some journey. Yeah. Um, I just wonder if you've sort of emotionally what that would mean to you to become a world champion. I think I'm trying my best not to um, think too much about it and just focus on, you know, blocking the south for jab, landing my counter right hands, whatever. And then whatever happens after that happens after that. But I'm really looking, looking forward to the victory. I do think that's one of my main motivations, though, is that you know this will be a good exclamation point, and it will allow me to make some changes in my area um, with that sort of positive role models, a positive figure to look at. It's a big night for the gym as well. You've already given uh, Chris Bill and Smith a shout out, Anthony Fowler as well. Um, Shane McGuigan seems to be a, a very good link up for the two of you. He seems to be bringing out the best. Uh, he, he bigged you up in his interview earlier, so it's, it's, it's only fair. Ah, go um, but he's a bit, it is a big night for the gym. Yeah. Uh, they've all wished you well. I'm sure you want to wish them well as well. No, no, 100%. It's amazing, um, the energy in the gym. Um, they all push me on. We've got whoops. Shout out to whoop. If you feel like giving me some free membership, I'll also take it. But it's... Um, I'm it's sure a, it's a ban. Laws being broken no, it, it, actually, no, but this, no, but generally the whoop, obviously, it's, we always train hard, but it's good because it's brought us together even to another level where I'm still checking up to see if they're keeping up their runs, they're doing the same, who's punching the hardest, who's sleeping the best. When you start competing about who gets to bed earlier, you know what kind of gym you're in. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of us going in, getting good victories and then um, pushing on to the next, uh, next part. Are there any nerves at all? Is, there, is the unknown for you? You haven't boxed for a world title before. At the moment, you're just projecting so much confidence. I can't believe that there aren't any nerves deep down. Um, uh, you don't seem to be someone that suffers from nerves, yeah. but when you think about it, when you're just on that, those steps before you walk out uh, up the ring walk, how do you think you're going to be feeling? I think I'll be calm. Like I'm quite present like, throughout all things. No matter what the situation is, regardless, you know, you're gonna have to, I'm going to have to get in there and have a fight. So... Me being nervous now or wasting energy, that's what it is, a waste of energy. So I'm just strolling through. Uh, like, like you said, where I've come from to where I am right now is a blessing. So every day I just enjoy it, do you know what I mean?
Brilliant. Well, I've kept you long enough. Go Thank well on Saturday. Much. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us on our live stream. For all the comments uh, that you sent in, for all the criticisms, I've ignored them. Uh, make sure you join us. To, <laughs> I joke, obviously. Thank you for, for sending in your comments. Um, make sure you join us tomorrow for the press conference. So wherever you've uh, consumed your material today, go to the same place tomorrow. We'll be there, uh, the press conference. And don't forget, 7 p.m. Sky Sports Arena, Saturday night. Great undercard, but obviously so much of the focus is going to be on that man that you're looking at now, Lawrence Akoli, taking on Shistov Gravatsky for the WBO Cruiserweight World title. Join us then. <laughs>